thanks for waiting. So today I'm going to have a presentation about control system of fixed wing built of tube motor when they uh, take off in the closed wind situation. So I'm Sejuno and nice to meet you guys. So this is the contents. And before I start my presentation, I would like to introduce myself because I'm the KAIST intern and I think I'm uh, a bit different about I didn't, I, don't, I didn't really know about this program, so I'll have to give you a short introduction. So I'm from South Korea, and I belong to KAIST. I'm currently a third year undergraduate student in Department of Aerospace Engineering. Yeah, and I love tennis, and I'm also really interested about like uh, flying RC planes and drones, and also aerial photography. Yeah, so uh, before, I think uh, my research topic before this one is maybe, the terminology may be uh, quite confusing because it has lots of hard words, like veto or tetra so I will give you an uh, introduction about it. So tilt rotor aircraft is a combination aircraft uh, combine, co combinating the two pros of fixed wing and rotorcraft. So we all know how fixed wing aircraft is. This is just a, like a picture of Airbus A350 aircraft. It's just a, a wing. It says it's fixed wing because the wing does not move. And on the other hand, the world cap, uh, for example, there's a helicopters or like DJI quad, uh, drones that we use to take videos. These are uh, rotorcrafts. So the main difference is fixed wing aircraft, they can glide. Although world cap, they can glide, but it's not that efficient. So fixed wing aircraft, they can glide. They're more heavy, they're more heavy. So they can carry more fuel, they can uh, carry more passenger and also fly more. And world cap, on the other hand, the pros they have is they can take off and land vertically, which we call it a VTO, vertical takeoff and landing. So uh, in the future, the aircraft we need is uh, the combination of these two aircraft, which is uh, efficient so that they can fly for a long distance, but at the same time, the aircraft which they don't need any runway. So they, uh, if so, if the fixed wing aircraft have some different configuration and design, so if they can take off and land vertically, that's the type of aircraft we need in the future. And those type of aircraft, one of those type of aircraft is called tilt rotor, and they're all in the category of called UAM, which is urban air mobility. So these are some type of um, examples of tilt rotor aircraft. So yeah, the top two aircraft is a tilt, uh, example of tilt rotor aircraft. And the platform vehicle, the platform aircraft I'm trying to research is the aircraft shown in below. So uh, if you see on the aircraft bottom, the aircraft here has a large portion of main wing than the aircraft above. So which, which means that even though this aircraft may be heavier than the above two, this aircraft can have a, a better, um, better ability to glide in the air. So and if you see the, the GIF on the left, you can see how the aircraft behaves like a helicopter when they take off. But then after the transition, so after the motor tilts to the forward, and then it behaves just like the original fixed wing aircraft. So now uh, I'll talk about I'll talk about why I did this research. So um, in real world situation, when the aircraft take off, they always have to confront the wind. And if uh, for the convention of aircraft such as drone, uh, there's a diagram of drone, when there is a wind, the, the only thing the aircraft to do is just to point the thrust vector toward the wind. However, for the fixed wing V2 aircraft, it's kind of uh, hard to see right now. But because of there is an existence of the big main wing, the main wing acts like a kite. So it gets all the drag force from the air, and it makes the aircraft. In the worst case, it flips the aircraft. So if the tilt rotor aircraft, the future of the air mobility, but it has this kind of significant drawback that the wind, when they take off, would flip the aircraft. And even though the aircraft, they can use like two strong motor thrust on the other two, and other two, they can uh, make the uh, thrust of the motor less. So they can tilt the aircraft, so they can behave like a, a rotor craft when they take off. However, this is also a problem because when they take off, they use a lot of fuels, a lot of energy. And then when they try to confront, uh, try to stay in the same location just to, just to against the wind, it takes a, uh, they consume a lot of energy, which means it's going to have a less uh, range of flight. So the solution of this is called weather vane. So as soon as aircraft take off, it's better for the aircraft to head toward the wind. In this case, since our, since my topic is uh, 
focus on tilt toward the fixed wing aircraft. If the aircraft has the heads the head toward the wind, then the aircraft can generate wind and also reduce the drag on uh, made on the main wing. So this is how it basically works. For example, in this case, the aircraft is going to take off towards the x direction, which is north. And then let's say the wind is coming from the 0, 090 degree, which is from east to west direction. So as soon as aircraft take off, the aircraft going, the orientation of aircraft will going to uh, roll to the right, so that aircraft can maintain the same position. After it take off, uh, by the algorithm itself, it's going to guide the aircraft to change the yaw aircraft to 0, 0, 0 degree to 0, 090. So at the right, you can see how the aircraft would behave. And this is the purpose of my uh, research, to make the algorithm of this. Uh, and before uh, talking more about the methodologies, actually uh, the, the platform I'm using is quite interesting because it's an uh, over-actuated problem. So we all know that aircraft in the air, it has six degrees of freedom. And the drone in the other hand, because the typical drone, like DJI quadcopter, because they only have four variables, which is four RPM values, is under actuated problem. However, in my case, uh, in my platform, it has 12 channels, 12 variables to configure six degree of freedom, which means this is an over actuated problem. So uh, I may have more than one way to achieve a different orientation, different attitude of aircraft. Uh, on the other, this also tells me that I can also compare different uh, ways to achieve a different orientation. Uh, so right now I'm develop, develop, uh, I'm now I'm working on the development process, and the lab is uh, shown uh, how my laptop, the configuration of my laptop right now. So I'm using a case for a firmware. And because I'm not going to right, move on to the actual aircraft itself, I'm trying to put all the PX firmware and uh, simulation inside my laptop. And for the simulation, I use the Gazebo and also uh, ROS platform as well. And because my, my laptop is Windows, I'm using a uh, Windows subsystem, uh, subsystem for Linux as a, uh, to, to run this kind of program. And then if I finish all the programming, then I can move on to make my own aircraft and then finally, move all the software, all the flight computer controller software to the PIXOP, which is the flight name of the flight controller hardware. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, current my progress. I can show you. Okay, it works. So yeah, this is the Gazebo simulation video record. I, I took it. And so as soon as aircraft uh, take off, because the aircraft algorithm is, itself can configure the, the wind direction, so as soon as it take off, it, you can see in the video that it tries to change the heading towards the wind direction. In this case, uh, the wind is coming from south to north. Um, so this is the first achievement I made. However, uh, this was a relatively easy uh, project because um, in this case, the aircraft is not a tilt throw. It's just a, it's just a quadcopter with a fixed wing, which means that it's, uh, if you see the red vector, the resultant thrust vector, it's, it's, it is very easy to understand what where the direction from the wind is coming. So in my situation, because I'm talking of, because my, my focus area is tilt rotor, um, I have to not only think about the total thrust vector, I have to also think about the, uh, the each four engines, each four motors tilted angle. So yeah, so now, uh, currently I'm now working on this part. Yeah, it's going to, I, I, I keep doing simulation every day. It's going to take about like two weeks. So yeah, this this is pretty much of it. Current, yeah, this is like pretty much of it, of my current progress. Thank you for this. Uh, when you say you program and uh, for the simulation and whatnot, is it, is it what language is it? And how do you go about doing it? Yeah, it's, it's basically all C++. And also they and because C plus I was learning for the first time. I used like MATLAB to try to prove my code. Yeah. And what was the other question? Uh, well, how do you go about um, finding the right algorithm? Like, say you write an algorithm. How do you do? You just guess the improvements, or are there oh, specific yeah. guidelines that you follow? Yeah. So uh, what I do change. is in the simulation world, I um, I say that I just give the input, like for example, the constant wind, I just give constant wind from south direction. And I can say this program works when the aircraft take off 
uh, in different direction than south. And when the aircraft uh, yaw, the heading of the aircraft, when, they, when it changes to the south, then I say the simulation, the program of my code needs to work. However, I also uh, try to measure the time and the orientation so that uh, the, the changing yaw, the, the time, duration of the yaw changing would not take too much time. Uh, is the algorithm designed to be entirely autonomous? And if so, how much of the world plane detect the uh, wind direction in real time? And is it designed to change with changing wind direction? Yeah, so, um, because in the case, I assume it's going to be a constant wind. Uh, but however, if the, the user gives the yaw input, then it's going to override the current function. Yeah. But uh, as soon as the user uh, takes hands off the control, then the this function overrides again, and then when the vehicle itself goes to the like, automated mission mode, for example, like flying through the flight route, then and then uh, this function goes off. But these are like all my preferences, and I can choose all the options.